Hey, Alpha Nurses, I'm Nurse Sandro from alphanurseguide.com. This is LPN Exam Review 52, Legal and Ethical Issues in Nursing. You can get my study guides on Etsy. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok for more content. All links are in the description. Without the way, let's get started. Question 1. When a nurse is administering a medication to a confused patient, the patient says, this pill looks different from the one I had before. What should the nurse do? A. Ask what the other pill looked like. B. Explain the purpose of the medication. C. Check the original medication prescription. D. Encourage the patient to take the medication. The correct answer is C. Check the original medication prescription. Rationale, answer C is the safest intervention because it goes to the original source of the prescription. Answer B ignores the patient's concern. Answer A is unsafe because the patient is confused and the information obtained may be inaccurate. Answer D ignores the patient's statement and is unsafe without first obtaining additional information. Question 2. A nurse administers an incorrect dose of a medication to a patient. Which is the primary purpose of documenting this event in an incident report? A. Record the event for future litigation. B. Provide a basis for designing new policies. C. Prevent similar situations from happening again. D. Ensure accountability for the cause of the accident. The correct answer is C. Prevent similar situations from happening again. Rationale, risk management committees use statistical data about accidents and incidents to identify patterns of risk and prevent future accidents and incidents. Providing a basis for designing new policies is not the primary reason for incident reports. Although documentation of an incident may be used in a court of law, it is not the primary reason for an incident report. Although nurses are always accountable for their actions, accountability for the cause of an incident is the role of the courts. Question 3. When preparing to administer a medication, the nurse identifies that the dose is larger than the standard dose recommended by the manufacturer. Which should the nurse do? A. Inform the supervisor. B. Give the drug as prescribed. C. Give the average dose of the medication. D. Discuss the prescription with the primary health care provider. The correct answer is D. Discuss the prescription with the primary health care provider. Rationale Nurses have a professional responsibility to know or investigate the standard dose for medications being administered. Nurses are also responsible for their own actions, regardless of whether there is a written prescription. The nurse has a responsibility to question and or refuse to administer a prescription that appears unreasonable. Giving the drug as prescribed may be unsafe for the patient and may result in malpractice. Changing a medication prescription is not within the scope of nursing practice. Question 4. When a nurse attempts to administer a medication to a patient, the patient refuses to take the medication because it causes diarrhea. The nurse provides teaching about the medication, but the patient continues adamantly to refuse the medication. Which should the nurse do first? A. Document the patient's refusal to take the medication. B. Discuss with a family member the need for the patient to take the medication. C. Explain again to the patient the consequences of refusing to take the medication. D. Notify the primary health care provider of the patient's refusal to take the medication. The correct answer is A. Document the patient's refusal to take the medication. Rationale, withholding the medication and documenting the patient's refusal are the appropriate interventions. Patients have a right to refuse care. Discussing the situation with a family member without the patient's consent is a violation of confidentiality. The patient has been taught about the medication and adamantly refuses the medication. Further teaching at this time, may be viewed by the patient as badgering. Notifying the primary health care provider eventually should be done, but it is not the priority at this time. Question 5. 
Which organization is responsible for ensuring that nurses are minimally qualified to practice nursing? A. State Boards of Nursing B. American Nurses Association C. Sigma Theta Tau International D. Constituent Leagues of the National League for Nursing The correct answer is A. State Boards of Nursing Rationale, the National Council of State Boards of Nursing is responsible for the NCLEX examinations, however, the licensing authority in the jurisdiction in which the graduate takes the examination verifies the acceptable score on the examination. Question 6. For which primary reason is a nurse expert called to testify in a lawsuit regarding professional nursing malpractice? A. To strengthen the defense. B. Support the prosecution. C. To present standards of nursing care as they apply to the facts in the case. D. Make judgments associated with laws governing the practice of nursing. The correct answer is C. To present standards of nursing care as they apply to the facts in the case. Rationale the American Nurses Association Standards of Clinical Nursing Practice are authoritative statements by which the National Organization for Nursing describes the responsibilities for which nurses are accountable. An expert nurse is capable of explaining these standards as they apply to the situation under litigation. These professional standards are criteria that help a judge or jury determine if a nurse committed malpractice or negligence. Question 7. A patient is asked to participate in a medical research study. Which document should the nurse explain to the patient because it protects the patient's rights? A. Code of Ethics B. Informed Consent C. Nurse Practice Act D. Constitution of the United States The correct answer is B. Informed Consent Rationale, informed consent is an agreement by a person to accept a course of treatment or a procedure after receiving complete information necessary to make a knowledgeable decision. Nurse practice acts define the scope of nursing practice, they are unrelated to participation in research studies. Question 8. Which element of ethical practice is associated with fair policies and procedures guiding allocation of organs for transplantation? A. Justice B. Fidelity C. Veracity D. Non-maleficence The correct answer is A. Justice Rationale, justice refers to fairness and that all patients should be treated equally, impartially, and without prejudice, regardless of individual factors. Fidelity refers to making only promises or commitments that can be kept. Veracity refers to being truthful, which is essential to a trusting nurse-patient relationship. Non-maleficence refers to preventing harm, avoiding actions that can cause harm, or removing a patient from harm. Question 9. A nurse witnesses an accident and assists the victim who has a life-threatening injury. Which should the nurse do to meet an important standard of care when acting as a good Samaritan at the scene of an accident? A. Seek consent from the injured party before rendering assistance. B. Implement every critical care intervention necessary to sustain life. C. Stay at the scene until another qualified person takes over responsibility. D. Insist on helping because a nurse is the best qualified person to provide care. The correct answer is C. Stay at the scene until another qualified person takes over responsibility. Rationale, when a nurse renders emergency care, the nurse has an ethical responsibility not to abandon the injured person. The nurse should not leave the scene until the injured person leaves or another qualified person assumes responsibility. Depending on the injured person's physical and emotional status, the person may or may not be able to consent to care. The nurse should not attempt interventions that are beyond the scope of nursing practice. Question 10. An anxious patient repeatedly uses the call bell to get the nurse to come to the room. Finally, the nurse says to the patient, if you keep ringing, there will come a time I won't answer your bell. 
Which legal term is related to this statement? A. Slander. B. Battery. C. Assault. D. Libel. The correct answer is C. Assault. Rationale, this is an example of assault. Assault is a verbal attack or unlawful threat causing a fear of harm. No actual contact is necessary for a threat to be an assault. Slander is a false spoken statement resulting in damage to a person's character or reputation. Battery is the unlawful touching of a person's body without consent. Libel is a false printed statement resulting in damage to a person's character or reputation. Question 11. A nurse must administer a medication. Which should the nurse do first? A. Verify the prescription for accuracy. B. Check the patient's identification armband. C. Ensure the medication is in the medication cart. D. Determine the appropriateness of the prescribed medication. The correct answer is A. Verify the prescription for accuracy. Rationale, the administration of medications is a dependent function of the nurse. The primary healthcare provider's prescription should be verified for accuracy. The prescription must include the name of the patient, the name of the drug, the size of the dose, the route of administration, the number of times per day to be administered, and any related parameters. The other actions may be done, but are not the first step, when preparing to administer a medication to a patient. Question 12. A patient is scheduled to have surgery, and informed consent is to be obtained. Place the following steps in the order in which they should be performed. A. The patient is willing to sign the consent voluntarily. B. The patient signs the consent in the presence of the nurse. C. The nurse determines that the patient is alert and competent to give consent. D. The primary healthcare provider informs the patient of the risks and benefits of the procedure. The correct order is D. The primary healthcare provider informs the patient of the risks and benefits of the procedure. C. The nurse determines that the patient is alert and competent to give consent. A. The patient is willing to sign the consent voluntarily. And B. The patient signs the consent in the presence of the nurse. Rationale. It is the responsibility of the primary HCP to include all the information necessary to make a knowledgeable decision. The patient must be alert, competent, and in touch with reality. Confused, sedated, unconscious, or minor patients may not give consent. Patients must give their consent voluntarily and without coercion. The healthcare provider, witnessing the signing of the consent, must ensure that the signature is genuine. Question 13. Identify the actions that are examples of slander. Select all that apply. A. A volunteer telling another volunteer a patient's age. B. Nurse explaining to a patient that another nurse is incompetent. C. Personal care assistant sharing information about a patient with another patient. D. Unit manager documenting a nurse's medication error in a performance appraisal. E. Housekeeper who is angry at a nurse, falsely telling another staff member that the nurse is a thief. The correct answers are B. Nurse explaining to a patient that another nurse is incompetent and E. Housekeeper who is angry at a nurse, falsely telling another staff member that the nurse is a thief. Rationale, answer B is an example of slander. Slander is a false spoken statement resulting in damage to a person's character or reputation. Answer E is a malicious false statement that may damage the nurse's reputation. Answer A and C is a violation of the patient's right to confidentiality, not slander. Answer D is not slander because it is a written, not a spoken statement, and it documents the truth, not false information. Question 14. A student nurse is about to graduate from an accredited nursing program. Which does the student nurse understand are actions unrelated to a state nurse practice act? Select all that apply. A. Setting guidelines for nurses' salaries in the state. B. Establishing reciprocity for licensure between states. C. Determining minimum requirements to be licensed as a nurse. 
d maintaining a list of nurses who can legally practice in the state e providing legal counsel for a nurse who is being sued for malpractice the correct answers are a setting guidelines for nurses salaries in the state d maintaining a list of nurses who can legally practice in the state and e providing legal counsel for a nurse who is being sued for malpractice rationale the salary of nurses is determined through negotiations between nurses and their employers a list of nurses who can legally practice in the state usually are delegated to another official body such as a state board of nursing or state education department state nurse practice acts do not provide legal counsel for a nurse who is sued for malpractice a state's nurse practice act determines the criteria for reciprocity for licensure a state's nurse practice act stipulates minimum requirements required for a person to be licensed as a nurse question 15. a primary health care provider asks a nurse to witness informed consents for several patients which patients identified by the nurse are unable to give an informed consent for surgery select all that apply a a 16 year old boy who is married b a 50 year old woman who is confused c a 35 year old woman who is depressed d a 50 year old woman who does not speak english e a 65 year old man who has received a narcotic for pain the correct answers are b a 50 year old woman who is confused and e a 65 year old man who has received a narcotic for pain rationale a person who is confused is unable to understand the risks and benefits associated with making an informed decision narcotics depress the central nervous system including decision making abilities this person is considered functionally incompetent a depressed person is capable of making healthcare decisions until proven to be mentally incompetent the person who does not speak english can provide informed consent after interventions ensure that the person understands the facts and risks with the treatment legally individuals younger than 18 years old can provide informed consent if they are married pregnant parents members of the military or emancipated